Hi, welcome to CEO Speak. I'm Bhavani. Last 10 years, we've seen the full cycle of entrepreneurship from VCs pumping in blind money to the dreaded in e-commerce giants and to the cash churning unicorns. Today, my guest is a gentleman who's inverted the Murphy's Law. He started not one but four bootstrap ventures and not one failed, by the way. He's a technical powerhouse, a CEO and an investor. I'm in conversation with Vijay Gupta, CEO of Think Future Technologies and the man behind AuthorizedDealer.com which is the world's first and only authorized dealer network. Vijay, thanks for coming. Such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I've known you for a while now, but uh, I don't think anybody knows Vijay between IT Kanpur and Concept Software. So, so what happened there? So Bhavani, uh, thanks for having me with you in this show. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, um, I, I graduated in 85 from IT Kanpur, and then I did two jobs initially, one right. with Uptron in Lucknow, other one CDOT in Delhi. Wow. I think the real transformational one was uh, Rabocontel. So Rabocontel was an authorized distributor of uh, Apple in India at oh. that point of time. This is 87. And that's where we had this ecosystem. So what were you selling at Rabo? They did not have phones or something. Yes, what, so, what? so Apple computer was fast turning out to be a desktop publishing unit. Did it have a market that time? In oh, India? yes. Yeah? So all desktop publishing, you know, newspapers, books, they were being published using Apple systems. Wow. Right. I mean, app, uh, they brought down the cost by uh, almost uh, magnitude, you know, one-tenth of what was there before Apple systems. Mm. So with Apple system, we had this chance to bring in all the regional languages, Indian languages, mm. on the Apple platform. Rabobundle didn't have any technical history, right. so we, we three people who joined them mm. had the... Oh, you were a four people team? Yes. Right? We just had the complete uh, ecosystem with us, say, do what you want to do, you go ahead, make products for the Indian market, right. just make sure that they... So they were you out. selling as well then or you were only... We are only doing development. Okay. But because of the, the, the quality of the Apple systems, hmm. uh, the user acquisition was never a problem. The okay. customer acquisition was never a problem. Okay. Because by default, everybody knew them to be desktop TV systems. Right. And with our plugins and with our software for Indian languages, uh, it afforded the users here, the customers here, uh, quality uh, desktop output, they, which they couldn't get from a, any other system. Right. PC by the time were still not there right. at, at that point right. of time. I was just wondering, so, yes. so, so how were you coding on these um, Apple systems? So Apple system had a, that time it's called, uh, there was a, a, a desktop uh, shell called MPW, right. Macintosh uh, Worksheet or something this used to be called, I'm forgetting the full acronym. And uh, so we used to actually program in Pascal. Uh, that was the language in, at, at that point of time. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, and, and then Apple, you know, is a very close system. Unlike PC, which you see today, is a very open system. Right. So from development perspective, it's a very close system. Mm. So we had to struggle really hard. Right. And remember, these are the days when we didn't have internet. Right. So any communication between Apple and here used to be uh, Forget about quite a task. Yeah. You did not have internet. Yes. You were not copy pasting the codes from anywhere. Oh, oh yes. So everything had to be kind of done from uh, from scratch, and that was in a way good because yeah. uh, uh, copy pasting has its own pluses and minuses, and I think there are more minuses than plus. Right. Right. So, so what happened? So between the jobs, uh, so then Concept Software was the first one. Yes. It? So 1991 is a uh, was a year when my, my Microsoft came up with the first usable graphical user interface based hmm. PC system. Till then, that point of time, it was all DOS. Hmm. Right. And so, once we had this uh, GUI-based system, which we now know as Windows, that's when we thought that what we are doing for Apple could easily be migrated and transplanted to Windows platform. Oh, okay. And when you said we, hmm. there were two people from the from the Rubber Control, uh, team, me and RP Singh. Hmm. So we both kind of uh, so RP was also a classmate. Yes, so he's my batchmate from IIT Kanpur. Okay. And uh, we both uh, thought that it would be the right way if we kind of moved to Windows mm. and quickly came up with the solutions on Windows. So did you actually scale up concept software to a decent size? Uh, so so as this a, was 92. This was 92 and so when we started we so had you a, were a two people team. Yes. And then five, ten years, what did it become? So. If you say in terms of number, I think in 2000, we were around 20 people team. Mm. But I think for a product company, even at that point of time, 20 people team as a software product was a size of a number. Team. Was a size of number. Yeah. Especially if you do over 20, they were almost 14 or 15 engineers. Right. So it was quite a sizable team from a right. product perspective. Right. So Vijay, every entrepreneur goes through this um, phase of lowness and a self-rejection phase, I would say. 25 years, four ventures, has there been a moment of 
where you felt that you hit the rock bottom and uh, wanted to give up everything and go back was what was your turnaround moment well or i never there was no such moment i never you. had the rock bottom moment at my own personal level wow. but yes from family perspective there has been such moments and i distinctly remember one moment hmm. this was late 94 hmm. so we were still developing the product we had it 99% complete but this, the last 1% was taking time as is the case uh and we didn't have money to buy even milk my daughter was 4 years old and shreya shreya and my wife we had to borrow money from the dhobi you know there's a dhobi in all these colonies who oh, who iron it out so we borrowed 10 rupees from him and got the milk so yes you can call that rock bottom but the family had been very supportive and even that day she didn't turn around and say hey leave this and go back to job so no this of this is fine it'll take some time we understand so vijay i'm aware that uh, tft is a full stack id services firm but is there anything a couple of things that you guys do exceptionally well yeah i would say uh, we started with the testing uh, so when we started in 2006 2007 right we focused on testing right end to end testing services to customers and still date that seems to be our forte and that remains our forte what kind of testing so this is software applications testing hmm. so a typical problem uh, product developers all over the world have they have a good idea they execute on it but they do not know how to take it out to the market in a so when i say take it out to the market i'm not meaning the marketing sense i'm saying a well tested product that focuses on the users who are going to use them and ensures that the users when they use them they're not so it's not crash surprised mode. it's not yeah so they don't get surprised with right. the crashes and all so that's what testing is all about and right. with as the company grows and i i i'll come to a, i'll give a specific example as the company grows and becomes a leader there's all the more need for that company to come out with more frequent releases right. more features right. making it more powerful more frequent releases means more testing right now there was a client of ours called match.com in 2008 we, we started match. doing yeah. yeah so match.com is an online dating service right. the biggest the, the leader in us yeah. so we started with simple testing manual testing and as we progressed we can we saw that the release cycle was one month which means that they had to make a change and make take it to the market it will take them one month to wow. do it which is a huge yeah so we automated testing so, so re- you you actually reduced their time to market with the new the new with the new process and the new automation and it's process it's person full proof that it's not going to uh, fail when it reaches the market absolutely tomorrow. absolutely yeah. the typical problem is when you add new features right those features work but the old features stop working the, and that's what is called regression testing hmm. so we introduced the automation testing concept way back in 2008 where they could automate uh, the entire suit overnight so they their suit used to run 40 machines pa- concurrently parallelly overnight by morning we knew what areas had bugs which area we need to fix or if it was ready to go right is this testing is a field software testing as a field is so specialized that they need a third party to do it for them why is it that they can't do it themselves and why do they need somebody like you to come in and help them so there, there are a couple of things one is you need resources to do testing right despite what people may say mm. us doesn't have resources for example to do all this kind of testing right we'll come to us yes or for instance any you know more, more, most of the you, you look at even a startup nation like israel right there's so many uh, people who want to be entrepreneurs mm. nobody mm. Want, nobody wants to do just testing right and then testing as a field has to be evolved it has to be done in a very formal uh, me- uh, mechanism with formal methodology right. unless you do so that framework there is a process there's, there's a there framework tools. there's a process there are tools now we have what is called devops right. which which kind of goes right from implementation to testing to deploying and maintenance uh, to the life environment right. so unless you do it in a formal way mm. it's it's not going to work out it, it, it's like a flight like if, mm. when a flight is getting ready you need to have a checklist of items right if you don't have that checklist right. there's no way your plane is going to fly right so there will be thousand items on the checklist right. so you need to maintain that checklist right. and that's what testing is about being organized is having a formal process right. and following that process to the end so my another question is um <clears throat> on one of your other ventures uh, and and that's very fascinating so so i'm introduced to people like just style and india mart and i know what they do but uh, what what is authorized dealer is it is it a competitor to these services what is it 
that you do at authorized dealer and do you and, and i know that you know you arrange that handshake between you create that buyer seller ecosystem somewhere on on that platform uh, so so what is so special and uh, interesting about authorized dealer by the way so authorized dealer as a name suggests is mm. a solution for authorized dealers so we only focusing on entities those are authorized by their manufacturers right to provide services it could be products it could be services right right so that's a focus okay now how, how is it different from just dial or india mart so again we focusing only on authorized dealer which means we have genuine sellers right. we don't have uh, sellers who are uh, you know on 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 let's say just dial when you search for let's an ac you could have anybody selling an ac right but in our in our platform those entities are verified and yeah. we have documentation to prove that they are actually authorized dealers and we actually do a that authorization the due diligence from our uh, perspective so you put those checks and balances to make sure that uh, only the right genuine sellers are on your platform absolutely and and, and that benefit both the users and the dealers right because dealers get only genuine they get only five queries but they all join in genuine yeah. unlike india mart or just dial they may get hundreds of queries right there's no way they can get even they don't close the deals they don't close the deals yeah. so for the, for the dealers or vendors that's a value we we can put it in other way if only one out of 10 is genuine then the rest of nine are noise right. so we are removing that noise from our system wow okay to the end user when he wants to buy hmm. he knows that he when he comes he comes to authorizedealer.com he's going to be only buying from the authorized dealer do manufacturers also find a place on your portal oh absolutely so we started with authorized dealer yeah. and because they are authorized dealers of manufacturer so manufacturer by default come in right. and to manufacturer we provide a lot of value addition right. they have a dashboard where they can see all the dealers they can locate their dealers on the map they can see how dealers are what they're doing with the queries whether right. they're handling it well or not right. so th- that's that's the kind of value we are providing the manufacturer you you're impacting the supply chain from end to end yes you know yes so right from their production planning to the way it is yep. delivered and is consumed yes. by the end user yeah so we are doing that by ensuring that <coughs> this channel uh, is kind of sacrosanct hmm. user to to the dealer hmm. that when the, when the user is coming to a dealer the dealer is verified right. and user know that he is verified right. so once once that channel is verified right. rest of it flows automatically so you know vijay uh, 2016 for me i would personally remember it for two big reasons one is uh, demonetization and the second is trump so uh, with the new government in us and you being a technology small and medium size segment does it bother you somewhere what do you as as an as a medium size business what do you stand to lose gain uh, what's what's the future ahead and, and 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 i know that you know the kind of dependency that indian services firms have on the us market what do you think about it so what i mean trump happening is not some it's not an overnight phenomenon yeah it's not something which happened overnight and people were surprised no right i think this has been the writing has been on the wall for the last 4 years anti establishment right? not only anti establishment i mean that's one piece to it from if you look at it services perspective hmm. labor arbitrage model, model business model was on its end okay and it was not going to uh, survive uh, this decade no way hmm. i mean so all the big ones the the, the big companies here made money on labor arbitrage by sending people on lower cost right that model was any way changing hmm. now the foc- i mean last 3 4 years the focus has been on digital hmm. what that means is machine learning hmm. data analytics hmm. and artificial intelligence hmm. so people had to migrate from being a low end job doing a bpo kind of job or even a software developer just body just shopping a, body shopping to <coughs> these domains where they can add more value and this is what's going to happen right. trump only has is acting as a catalyst now he's going to come up with the h1b visas programs and you know costlier visa regime and all that and on site develop so so how much of this is actually uh, going to happen on the ground and how much do you think is uh, for the media for the fan base for the voter base uh, as as far as the h1b is concerned um, well, you know how much you know outsourcing is actually going to be impacted on the ground is going to be impacted in a big way yeah i mean it's not for just just for media mm. it's already coming up and it's happening uh, and i think peep companies which work on labor arbitrage mm. they're going to they have to shut shop they either have to shut up, uh, set up offices in us and hire local people now that that's a, that's another challenge there, there aren't local people to yeah. be hired in that area yeah. right yeah. which is another challenge but 
I think in the short term is definitely going to happen in the next one year. And I think most of these companies are, are, are already thinking through mm. and already moving on to the digital bandwagon. Right. I was reading just uh, yesterday. ET. How do you actually move this to a digital bandwagon? So I'm thinking, uh, what would the Infosys and the TCS and the HCLs of the world would do if there is no labor arbitrage as you're talking about? or even minimized. So are we going to go for a, a, a surprise result to their Q4 endings now? So Bhavani, it's all about capital investment. Hmm. In labor arbitrage, you don't make any investment. You just hire people, send them off. Yeah. Whereas if you want to build a expertise, a competence in an area, hmm. you need to invest. Right. So companies who are making capital investment in these areas, in AI, in data analytics, hmm. in machine learning, in big data, are the ones who are going to survive. Is that something we are looking forward from TFT2? Oh yes, like. oh yes. We already have made plans and we, and in fact, if you go back even 2007, hmm. we always, because of our product background, product development background, yeah. we always followed that policy of building competency first and then going, providing service right. and not vice versa. All right. Yeah. All right. Hey Vijay, so we, we come to the coffee with current moment. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I do this so that, you know, your employees, your family, your your clients and me, we get to know you a little better. So I'm going to ask you some quick questions. Even the okay. family? Even the family. Okay. And uh, I'm going to ask you some quick, quick, quick questions. You take not more than three seconds to respond and okay. you cannot say no to anything. Okay. All right, so let's go with the first one. One latest song that makes you dance? Dil ki tarang se, phoolo ke rang se, phoolo ke rang se. Phoolo ke rang se, phoolo ke dil ki tarang se. Three words that describe Think Future Technologies best? Think Future Technologies. One word you use too much? Ariyar. <laughs> what is the best thing you've learned from your children? Patience. A secret desire you have? Be in Bhutan. Okay. <laughs> uh, a must on your food menu? Um, paneer. Okay. Larry Page or Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs. Windows or Mac? Mac. Alfred Hitchcock or Clint Eastwood? Alfred Hitchcock. Roman holiday or breakfast at Tiffany's? Roman holiday. Tel Aviv or New York? Tel Aviv. All right, thank you. Thank you. It, was, it was such a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure was mine. It was, it was really fun. All right, take thank care. Thank you so much, All the best for uh, Think Future Technologies and uh, Authorized Dealer. I look forward to seeing you again sometime. Thank take you care. so much, Bhavani. Bye-bye. You too.